Hi, my name is Sebastian and in this video I'm going to show you how to create and use a Telegram bot from within your Java application. This might be very helpful if, for example, you want to send yourself some notifications or some messages from within an automated process, such as a job that runs on your server. What we're going to do for this, I use a Java application powered by Quarkus and I'm going to use the Telegram API to create a bot and to send myself some messages. So what we're going to do for this, we're going to have a look at the Telegram bot API, which we can use to, well, create and to use a bot. And then that bot will um, send us, like our Telegram user, some messages automatically. What I'm going to use for this is a Quarkus Playground application that is available on GitHub. So this will just use some main process that is running from within a Java, um, Java Quarkus application, but it could be any uh, Java framework or thing that you want to use. And for this, what I'm first going to do, I'm going to just create some um, message calculator that does something. So imagine this is a job that runs somewhere, for example, that processes well, the result of a website, for example, to check for some price or to do whatever that then sends you a message. What we're going to do uh, for that for now for testing purposes, first of all, is to create a path, uh, for example, to send us a message. So I'm going to have some um, message method where I just uh, create some randomly uh, created message. Now it is something like a local time and then some random number and we're gonna send this. So where we're gonna send this to, I'm gonna create a class for our Telegram bot which we're then gonna include using HTTP, so using an HTTP client. I will create a class for this in a second, Telegram bot and I say bot send message. So send me please any random message. So think of it in a similar way like you would send an email or something like that that just sends you this message. Okay, and then let's say that is just a void. So no, uh, no content basically. And when we send this, our bot should also be um, a bean in our class and this will now use an HTTP client because that API uh, can be communicated with using HTTP. Let's do this and I'm gonna create this method and then what I'm gonna use, well first of all I'm gonna use a client here and again this can be, this can be uh, done using any Java technology that supports HTTP. I use this JAXRS client that already ships with Quarkus so with that, I'm going to create a client here. And if you open this, always make sure afterwards you close it again. And what I'm going to use then is this Telegram API. So this works as follows and you can double check that on the documentation that you have to send a message um, to this URI using, well, a bot, um, a bot token and using this URI, which is api.telegram.org and then slash bot and then immediately the token that we're gonna create. So how this works is that in a second we will create this bot using the Telegram um, functionality and then we can communicate with it. The schema is as follows that this um, is a token that immediately follows here and I will just resolve this template then by a configured uh, bot token. And this token then will be just used via a config uh, name. So I call this Telegram uh, bot token or something like this. So we're going to use this. I typically want to configure that. So I'm going to put this into my application properties. So that will be a token that I use for that purpose. And then I can send a message to this base target. base target and so on and so forth that will be a field and then I can continue from that okay now how this works is that I have to create a bot in telegram and there are a few uh, ways to do that probably the easiest one is to use 
um, another bot that is uh, called the, the bot father. So you can uh, check out the uh, documentation here, um, how, this, uh, how this works basically while getting some update and sending messages. So what I can do here, this is the Telegram uh, web portal, so the web um, application and the bot here is called Botfather, which is a bot to create bots, which is really easy to do. So you, uh, here it tells you also the documentation and everything. And I can just start by creating a new bot. So I can just type slash new bot and saying, okay, it will well literally chat with you and saying, how are we gonna call it? And then you just uh, name it. Call this my random bot. I hope this name is uh, available. Yes, sounds good. Um, my random bot, it will tell you which um, names you can take. It's already taken. My random one to three bot, whatever. Okay, so this works. And then it will give you a token. So this token is very important and don't share with everybody. In case you're wondering, I will delete this afterwards. And this token is that uh, what we need here in our properties. So that is literally what we uh, will use here. And that token will be used uh, in combination with our URL. So with this, that's already um, well sufficient. We can then just uh, go and, for example, edit the bot and give it a nicer name or whatever, but that's um, not really necessary. And then we can go and, well, first of all, and chat with this bot so we can already uh, go here and then communicate with it and that is also required so first of all we need to have at least one message uh, for the for the bot that we can initiate so for example i can go here and say start or hello world and then well nothing happens because uh, the bot doesn't um, communicate uh, yet with us so there is no functionality but then i can go in my application and implement this all right now how this works i want to show you on the command line so there is one way to communicate with the bot using the API, for example, with curl, which is then similar to what we will do in our application. And the URL for that is then this Telegram API URL using our actual token, the one that we just got back from the system. So I will use this token then to communicate with it. And then we can slash send another um, message or um, use another action. And one action is, for example, get me. That's just the name for it. So it will just get, um, get us some updates here. I can send this to this API and I get a result back. So it tells me, okay, the name is my random bot with that username and so on and so forth. And that's just the information here. <clears throat> what is also interesting and somewhat required is that we ask for some updates. So now we could go and have a look at these messages. So um, the messages that we got in this chat. And that's quite um, important for our purposes because we actually need this chat ID. So a chat ID, you can imagine this is just uh, the window in which you're chatting and that particular chat can be used then afterwards to send a new message. So that is, uh, for example, one way to send yourself a message. We will just keep this open for the bot and then you can communicate using this. All right, let's do that. So I will just save uh, this chat ID because we're gonna uh, need it in a second as well because that is just being used for then communicating and sending this message. saved us already and then what we can do we can finally send some message here for that i'll go back to the documentation and have a look at the available methods here and see i can for example send a message for which you can already well see what that requires so this is just an api call and then i can say for example i need required i need to provide the chat um, um ap uh, the chat no, it's gone chat ID and the text. And for this, I can already well send the message here. So for example, I can say the chat ID that I would like to provide is here the following. So first of all, I have the path send message. So this slash send message. And then I can say, well, please provide some query parameter. First is a chat ID, which is 
the chat ID here that I can configure. So that is one thing here, chat ID that I can provide. And the other thing that I need um, to provide is then the text, which is my actual message. So I can try this out and saying, okay, request, this should be a get method. And in my case, well, I can then also see if the whole thing is uh, successful. So this is then again, my um, HTTP client code, I can say, for example, um, if uh, this is uh, successful, so I can, uh, for example, say read the entity, because it will get a JSON uh, object back. And then tell us here whether the whole thing is okay. Maybe you saw this in the other response already, we have a boolean okay. And then we get this here. And for example, if it's not okay, we can then well, provide some output. Either this or you throw an exception, etc. For that, I also want to wrap it in a try catch uh, response. So this uh, depends on what you uh, would like uh, to do in your application. For example, uh, here, just in case I couldn't do anything uh, reasonable here. I can provide this as well. But we are mainly interested in sending the message using this API. Okay, now how this works, I will start my application, and then I will send some messages here. For that, I go to my application, I build it, and then I could run my application either directly or in Quarkus, um, also with the development mode, that also works. Let's, for example, say we'll start my Quarkus app and run it. And now in that way, I have my path available. So I could say um, curl localhost 8080 and then messages, I think was the path message. And then I have no response. Let's do this again. 204, no content. And let's have a look at my bot. And it says, okay, now it is. And it sent you the time with some random ID. So this already was very successful, we could send a message using this bot. And now what you can do, you can include this, for example, in some automated job that whenever something happens that you're interested in, this bot just sends you a message and then you can have a notification in your phone app, for example. So instead of having this testing uh, purpose as the uh, rest um, interface, instead we can, for example, say, we want to have um, a scheduled job. For example, every whatever, 30 seconds, it will um, just send you an update or maybe 15 seconds so it's faster. And then it will check for some precondition and depending on the result, it will send you a message there. Okay, let's have the local time. Now, nano, let's make this zero. So this is a shorter and then I could, for example, stop my application again, and I could rebuild it, or I say Quarkus dev, that I could also change something else as well. So this is the cool thing about Quarkus, also with the command mode application, it will then just uh, do something here, and, well, hopefully, send us a new message. Yes, so this happened, it sent uh, the new message at the start of the application already, and then every 15 seconds, it will send us a new message now, depending on what we would like to do. Now, this is how you can create and use a Telegram bot, especially useful for some notifications, where you would like to get some update, and especially useful for some automated job that you can run on a server that just notifies you directly. We saw how to use the HTTP API, you can use this within any um, programming language that supports HTTP, also, of course, Java, and you saw how to include this with Quarkus. All of that code, as always, is available on GitHub. And if this was interesting and helpful, I would really appreciate if you like the video and subscribe to my channel. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.